Welcome to Access Ideas, where we share insights and perspectives that spark curiosity, conversation, and inspiration. This is Yana, and today I'm pleased to share a brand new episode from our other podcast, Audiobook Reviews in 5 Minutes. This is the first nonfiction title of 2023 for me, and it's also one of the most uplifting and inspiring audiobooks I've listened to in a long time. Today I'm reviewing The Good Life, Lessons from the World's Longest Scientific Study of Happiness, written and narrated by Robert Waldinger and Mark Schultz. They promote their book with a few timeless philosophical questions. What makes for a happy life, a fulfilling life, a good life? The authors promise the answer may be closer than you realize. Waldinger and Schultz are the director and associate director of the Grant Study, also known as the Harvard Study of Adult Development, one of the most comprehensive longitudinal studies ever done, beginning in 1938 and continuing up to the present. The study initially followed the lives of two groups of men, one group of socially disadvantaged men, inner-city Boston boys from working-class families, and another group of privileged men, graduates of Harvard College. The study aimed to understand the factors that contribute to a successful and fulfilling life and eventually expanded to include the spouses and children of these men. The study found that the men who had the most satisfying and successful lives were not the ones who had the most money or the most prestigious jobs, but rather the ones who had strong relationships and a sense of community. The latest findings also show how strong relationships led to better health and longevity. Okay, so you might be wondering why these findings require a book, as it's not exactly groundbreaking. In 2010, a meta-analysis of 148 studies on mortality risk by Julian Holt Lundstad of Brigham Young University and colleagues found that strong social relationships increase the likelihood of survival by 50% regardless of age, sex, or health status. They found social disconnection is at least as harmful to people as smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day. The first reason I'm recommending The Good Life is the quality of writing and narration. I found the audio very relaxing to listen to while keeping me engaged. There's a tone of compassion in the audio performance that stands out especially for me in Waldinger's voice. This is 80 years worth of data, but the authors make it engaging and relevant by illustrating the study findings with real stories of study participants. Names and personal details have been changed, but the stories resonated with me deeply, including that of Sterling Ainsley, who used optimism to push away his fears and avoid challenges in his life. Putting a positive spin on every matter and then pushing it out of his mind made it possible for him to believe that nothing was wrong. He was fine. He was happy. His adult kids didn't need him. And yet, although he remained married, he lived alone. And he told the researchers that he spent time with an elderly woman who lived in a nearby trailer. Each night, he would walk over and they'd watch TV and talk. Eventually, she would fall asleep, and he would help her into bed and wash her dishes and close the shades before walking home. She was the closest thing he had to a confidant. I don't know what I'll do if she dies, he said. This sort of example reminds me of the line, it's a cliche because it's true, but it doesn't have to be. Repeatedly, the authors illustrate how our fears and our beliefs about self-sufficiency and monetary success get in the way of our reaching out to strengthen our social connections. Whether you want to get more out of your closest relationships with family or you're seeking to make the most out of your workplace relationships or you simply want to make new friends, the examples shown in the stories they share make this one of the most accessible research-based books that I've seen in a while. The authors also help dispel the popular idea that childhood trauma or tragedy guarantees an unhappy life. Using stories and data, they illustrate that while these factors make us vulnerable, they do not seal our fate. That leads me to my next point, which is the most important reason I'm recommending this book. The people most likely to benefit from its insights and recommendations are, I suspect, also the least likely to listen to or read this. You might know someone who believes they are better off sticking to self-sufficiency and they don't need anyone, 
or perhaps someone who believes they are too old to change their ways, or someone who may have long dedicated themselves to the pursuit of wealth at the cost of their relationships. Or perhaps you know of a young adult who is looking for solid, actionable life advice in all the wrong places. If any of these descriptions sound familiar, I strongly recommend you enjoy this audiobook and then share the insights with people in your life, especially those who might need to hear it most. And if you're personally in need of some good news, this is a fantastic listen to help you build on all the good relationship habits you already have. My hope is that by amplifying the findings of this extraordinary study, we can reframe popular ideas about happiness, health, and success. And if you're not quite ready to commit to listening to this 11-hour audiobook, I've added links to two excellent interviews with Robert Walzinger that will give you more context to work with. If you love access ideas, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and review us on Podchaser via the link in our show notes or wherever you happen to listen to podcasts. Tell your friends about the podcast too. Until next time, thanks for listening to Access Ideas. Thank you.